Oh, hello, welcome to this screencast that's all about promises, callbacks, and async await. So, in this session, we're going to unpack what are promises, what are call callbacks, and what are these funny async await code that we've seen in our um, database code so far. So, looking at this example I just ran, you'll see that if I keep on running this, I always get less learn about on top, and then promises, callbacks, and async await will be in any random order. And by the end of this screencast, you should be able to understand why this code that I have here, which is using lots of callbacks, is sometimes printing in various different orders. So one thing about Node.js that we need to understand is that inherently it's an asynchronous language and that it's using callbacks. So what we want to unpack it is ultimately what is async await, what are callback functions, and how to, for this specific example, we want to figure out how to connect to PostgreSQL from Node.js, and then how do we use callbacks to access the database using SQL, and then we ultimately want to see how do we use promises, which is a better way of using callbacks. And then ultimately we want to use async await, which is like a hidden hidden callbacks really. Because async await ultimately make it easier for us to use Node.js code in the database. So in this in this screencast series, we're going to be working through a little assignment. So this is all about creating a report. So what are we doing? We're running a category, a kitten category. Um, we want to send a weekly report. We have like three kittens arriving on Monday, five kittens that stay are staying longer than three days, and we have 13 kittens booked for the week. We want to create a function that can create this report from the data in the database. So the function takes two parameters, the weekday, which day we want to know the kittens arrive on and then we also want to say how many kittens are staying longer than a certain period of time and when we call our function it will look something like this create the report say for Tuesday and then we have three kittens and then it should create as a report and then ultimately find all the kittens coming on Friday when I say Friday and all the kittens staying longer than two days and it should create as a report that looks similar to this and then the SQL queries you'll need to run for this example or these three queries. So in this setup here, we talk you through of how to set up PostgreSQL, how to set everything up. Uh, if you follow these instructions and you run these two scripts from PSQL, you should get to a point where you have a kittens database or a easy kittens database, and you will have a kittens table. So let's have a look. So what I have here is I've got this set up so I'm connected to my database. I'll connect to my database here. So what I will do here is I will say psql easy underscore kittens. I will connect to that and I'll say select star from kittens. So you'll see that I've got this table in here. These instructions in in here is basically telling you how to set up PostgreSQL, how to get data in your database and how to get going. It also shows you the code that you need to be able to connect to your database from Node.js. So in this case, you basically need to paste this code in a file called index.js, which is something that I've already done. So I've got this code here, so I can say here, I can say node index js nothing's happening so what we want to do now is we want to get to a point where we start using callbacks initially and then ultimately we want to use promises and then after that we want to use async await the first thing before we start let's let's quickly talk through a bit of theory um, let's have a look not this file here we want to talk here about callbacks okay so we want to ultimately understand what is callbacks so callbacks, no J's is non-blocking. So non-blocking means it's not waiting for other for calls to the database. It doesn't wait. It uses callback functions. So it pours a function into another function as a parameter. 
that function can then call the function that's passed into it whenever it has an answer ready. Node.js don't wait for an answer. In the meantime, it can go and doing some other nice work. And when the called function is ready to is ready, it calls the function that's been provided. Okay, Node.js use JavaScript higher order functions extensively. So what is a higher order function, you ask me? A higher order function is a function that can pass into another function as parameters or it can be returned from a function. A callback function is a function sent in as a parameter into a function. The function it's passed into can call it. So the results are returned not via traditional return statement. This makes this is ultimately the thing that makes Node.js quick fast. So the thing to do now that we want to we want to do let's let's quickly use a callback function to call a query. So just now I basically what I can do I can do something like db pool dot I can do query so in this case what I want to say I want to say all the kittens so I've got select star from kittens so I'm running this that's now linked to my database and I want to use a callback now to get the result back so I'm basically sending in a function here callback functions in no Node.js first of all take error back and then it gets the results so what I want to do now is I first want to check was there an error, okay? So I want to say if there was an error, I want to just say console.log and then I want to say something like say like something something went went wrong. And then I want to say okay, what is it that went wrong? So now I can say something like that. I also say if there's no error I want to say console.log error, no not error, I want to say result, I want to call this result, not result, I want to say results, so let's have a look if I run this, um, I'm going to run this, no.index.js, result is not defined, okay so this is ultimately, this needs to be result, run that, come back here, you see now I'm getting all of these things back. So somewhere here, see there, it's giving me a lot of information about all the fields and everything that's in the query. But there's something here coming that's called rows that see me returning all the results in the database. So what I want to do instead of doing what I've done so far, I want to say result dot rows. So if I run that, so in this case, I just need I'm not closing connection, so my program doesn't quit. So I run that, so now you'll see that it's returning all the data in the database, all the kittens that's been booked in into my cat tree, it's returning it back. So because I've said results.rows, so what I can say here is results.row.length, now it should return to me, if I run that, and return 12, so basically telling me that there's 12 kittens in the database. So I can do control C, what I can also do, is I can change my query, say something like this count and then we can still say now I don't want to say length because now I do that I run that and then I get that so now it's a like count 12 so now it gives me a row one row so to get to the number I need to say row the first entry and then I can say the column name is called count so now I can say count run that and then I run that as just 12 kittens in the database. Okay, so now you can see here, this is how we're accessing the database using callbacks. So in this case, we use the query, we send in, we send in the SQL query, then we also send in a function that we want to send into, into this query method, and then once the query method ran, it's completed, it's got a result, it will call this function and it will ultimately print the results onto the screen. We can change this code a little bit to work to be something like this, just to make it clearer for you. So function CB, and now I'll put this code here. So now I've got a callback function that's over here, and then I will run my code. So I run that, node.js, you see the same thing. So ultimately now what we have is I've got a callback function here. I run the query here and then you'll see it's actually running the code up here. So it's not quite sequential, but that's the whole thing with asynchronous code. 
Other thing you'll note if if I put a console log statement here and say that we are done, we run something like that. We run that. You see, it will first print done, and then it will print the result. So that's one thing to bear in mind. This code is asynchronous here. It's not waiting. Okay, so it keeps on running, and then do console down, and only later when things are done it will actually come back and execute this code and that's the one thing that makes working with asynchronous code and something like Node.js is quite tricky in the beginning so that's a quick introduction of how we run how we run our setup and I've basically just followed all the instructions that's in here so you need to follow that create a database and then once you've created a database you can come back and set this up and then start running queries on your your database